Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Esselstyn. I'm delighted to have this interview with uh, Christopher. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you very much for your presentation here in Aalborg. It was really good and exciting, and I think I learned a lot personally. Thank you. Um, so I hope that some of these questions will help people perhaps understand why you're here and, and your results. Okay. In uh, 1956, when fast food restaurants were booming and you attended Yale University, was your diet at the time the same as the other students, or was it more oh, plant-based? No, no. I, I grew up on an Aberdeen Angus beef farm and a dairy farm. I ate all those wrong foods with everybody else, yes. Yeah. Um, so when did you begin adapting a plant-based diet, and why? Well, I uh, began becoming convinced that I had to do some research in plant-based nutrition when in uh, the late 1970s, early 80s, when I was chairman of the Cleveland Clinic Breast Cancer Task Force, I had become increasingly disillusioned with the fact that for no matter how many women that I was doing breast surgery, I was doing absolutely nothing for the next unsuspecting victim. And this led me to do a bit of, uh, uh, of a global review, because during this global review, it was apparent that there were many countries where breast cancer rates were 30 and 40 times less frequent than the United States. And perhaps uh, it was even quite interesting. And if you look at Kenya, for example, there was, again, breast cancer rates 30 and 40 times less frequent than the United States. If you looked at rural Japan in the 1950s, in rural Japan in the 1950s, breast cancer was very infrequently identified, and yet as soon as the Japanese women would migrate to the United States by the second and third generation, they now had the same rate of breast cancer as their Caucasian counterpart. Perhaps even more powerful was uh, in Japan, the mortality rate of prostate cancer in the entire nation. How many autopsy-proven deaths were there in 1958 in Japan? Eighteen the most mind-boggling public health figure I think I've ever heard. By 1978, 20 years later, they were up to 137, which pales in comparison to the 28,000 that will die in the United States this year. So it was about that point that I began encountering all these other cultures where cardiovascular disease was virtually non-existent. And it seemed to me that there would be more bang for the buck if we could therefore focus if we could train patients to eat to save their heart, then they would also give themselves the greatest chance against having the common Western cancers of breast, prostate, colon, and perhaps pancreatic. Okay. In your lifetime, have you seen a growing movement for people in general towards a plant-based diet? Oh yeah, the, 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 there's no question. The, the, uh, the landscape now is so different than it was Thank you very much when for we your, started. For your back, back in uh, uh, back in <laughs> back in 1984, that was uh, very, very, very unusual uh, to have patients supporting plant-based nutrition. But what happened is we began to do this early research, and when we began to see the how rapid and powerful the research could be for reversing heart disease. Then it, uh, then it got to be exciting. And nowadays, we have conferences with literally thousands of physicians who will come and who are interested in learning about this. They haven't really done it yet, no. but they want, they're they curious, they want to learn about it. Yeah. Uh, that was also the, the next question. Uh, do you see a rising pro-plan based diet movement within the healthcare system in America? Oh yeah, Europe? I just said it's, it's, yeah. yeah. But it's still, it's, so it's, we're pushing the rock uphill. It's tough, but, yeah. it's, but it's coming. It's coming, yeah. Um, how long time do you think it will take before a plant-based diet will be the norm in America? As, as soon as we get enough additional research that will make, uh, and also that will make it happen sooner than anything you can believe, okay. is if you start to compensate physicians and healthcare workers who will spend time with their patients doing this. Okay. You cannot just reward for stents and bypasses. You've got to reward and compensate physicians 
who are teaching the causation of this illness to their patients so the patients can stop it and don't have to have it. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian.